He pressed me to justify my reasons for saying no to him. These incidents took place in his office or mine. My working relationship became even more strained when Judge Thomas began to use work situations to discuss sex. I felt that I had to tell the truth. I could not keep silent. She called herself the reluctant witness nearly 25 years ago. Anita Hill, who appeared before the Senate Judiciary Committee and laid out allegations of sexual harassment against then Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas. The hearings opened up a brand new chapter in race and gender politics in this country, catapulting the issue of workplace sexual harassment into the headlines and beyond. The controversy is being retold in the HBO film Confirmation, which premieres tonight. Thomas, who at the time described the hearings as a, quote, high-tech lynching, denied the allegations. His nomination ultimately was approved by a narrow margin, and he continues to hold a seat on the high court today. Joining me now is Lonnie Guineer, professor at Harvard Law School, and Mark Pauletta, former attorney for the George H.W. Bush administration, who helped usher Clarence Thomas through his Supreme Court confirmation 25 years ago. Thank you both for being here. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks for having me. So, Mark, I want to start with you. Sure. Uh, you've read a script of the film. Yeah, I have. Um, and your thoughts are? My thoughts are that the script is an agenda-driven script to take out all the problematic parts of Anita Hill's testimony to sort of rewrite history, right, to make her more believable. This was a he said, she said. And at the end of the day, when the American people watch these hearings unfiltered, right, those were a weekend long set of hearings, right? They judged by a two to one margin that Thomas was telling the truth. They got to watch Anita Hill's story. They got to look at the witnesses that were supporting her. Anita's witnesses were extremely weak, okay? And so HBO's come along and in my view wants to educate a new generation of viewers that somehow uh, Anita Hill was more credible than she was. Uh, and, and that's what this movie is all about. Well, let me quickly first, before sure. I allow a lot of to respond to that, this is HBO's statement about their film. They said, we are very proud of our film confirmation as with all of our historical dramas, we took enormous time in researching and vetting the production. Many of those in the film and from all facets of the story were a part of the process. We look forward to audiences seeing the film and coming to their own conclusions. Your response, uh, Lonnie Greener, to what Mark said. Well, I knew both um, Clarence Thomas. He and I had gone to law school together. And I have met Anita Hill. I didn't know her at the time. But um, she was pretty, she was very supported very much supported by um, other witnesses and by the people who were helping her, especially uh, Charles Ogletree, who was a, a law professor. Mm -hmm. And also, I was at, in University of Pennsylvania Law School at the time, and mm -hmm. he and I were communicating over the phone rather than in person. Yeah, and it wasn't part of the support uh, that Clarence Thomas got at the time. Um, partly it, because he was replacing Thurgood Marshall on the court. And, and I want you guys to take a look at a poll at the time. And this will shock some people who don't remember it. African Americans were 70% in favor of Clarence Thomas. White Americans were only half and half. But part of this yeah. was a desire to see an African American on the court. I remember having epic fights with people over this because black people wanted him on the court. But the reality is at the time, we were in a different time in terms of gender and, the, and, and women, whether or not they are believed when they make these allegations. But, you can't look, just say that she was not credible. There was a lot more to it. I, you know, I don't believe she was credible, Joy. Look, there were 12 women who testified for Clarence Thomas, former co-workers, right? None of them supported Anita Hill. In fact, five or six of them specifically said they didn't believe her allegations, okay? So not a single co-worker uh, supported Anita Hill. Clarence Thomas had been through four FBI background checks. Th there had never been a hint of this kind of conduct. And in fact, nobody to this day under oath has said anything remotely similar to what Anita Hill has said. Well, uh, there were actual witnesses who didn't get to testify, first of all. There's one woman who's come forward since then saying yeah. that she wanted to testify. Yeah. And I think Joe Biden and others prevented her from testifying. Uh, that, and isn't it the case that when you talk about workplace sexual assault, part of the issue is women fearing they won't be believed. Because a co-worker doesn't believe you, that does not mean that you are not telling the truth. Well, and especially when we're talking about 1990, the 1990s rather than the 2010s, people have um, become much more aware of of, of the way in which some women have been treated yeah. for a long period of time. And you, not you just, know Anita Hill. You, you are now friends with her. You had dinner with her not long ago. Um, what are her thoughts about this country, looking back on it now and the fact that there's now an HBO movie about it? Well, it's not so much what she thinks about it. I think a lot of women are very proud of her and that she, she, she 
for her, the burden is not on what she thinks, but the fact that there's an enormous group of people that um, support her and agree with her. And in fact, you had after that, Carol Mosley Braun gets elected to the United States Senate. Sure. You had a lot of women who were galvanized by the way they felt right. that Anita Hill was mistreated, right. dragged through the mud, essentially, right. in order to elevate well, this man to the Supreme I, I Court. I don't think she was dragged through the mud. I thought she was asked tough questions. I think she could have been asked tougher questions. But here's the thing, Joy. 1992, we elect Bill Clinton to the White House, right? In 1998, Anita Hill goes on TV and writes our op-eds defending Bill Clinton against sexual assault and sexual harassment uh, allegations by Kathleen Willey, Monica Lewinsky, um, Paula Jones, who the president settled with. So I find it hollow, actually, that you know we made this great stride, and this, a year later we have a guy in, the, in office who has an affair with a, an, an intern and destroys her reputation. Well, I think, right? you know, I have to be honest and with Hill you, I think a consensual him. affair, no matter how long young Monica Lewinsky was and that power imbalance was actually very problematic, but we're talking here about unwanted sexual harassment yeah. charges against, and, and let me sure. just uh, also talk a little bit about what this has meant for but, Clarence But can I Thomas. go back to the second witness? Sure. Or, sure. So the second witness is Angela Wright, who I think in this movie, that's the biggest lie in this movie, is that she was prevented from testifying. You know, the backstory to Angela Wright is that she was fired several times, and in at the State Department, the job before she went to, to EEOC to work for Clarence Thomas, where she was fired, she was going to get let go. She uh, made baseless racism allegations against her supervisor. But she's guess, not here to answer for herself, but, but so we're not going to be there, slagging her on the air and making allegations okay. about her that she can't even be here to refute. But HBO leaves out the backstory to her testimony but you, and her the backstory background. from your point of view. I, she's not here to defend herself. Okay, I don't think fair it's fair to make allegations about okay. her. So she's even here. But isn't this also the issue that women come forward and then this is what happens essentially? Well. I I can't say that it happens all the time, but in her case, I did recommend to her lawyer that she take a um, t t take one of those take a lie detector. A lie detector, yeah. and she 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 passed through it that what she was saying was not a lie. Yeah, and, and do you think um, in the end, looking back now, we've had uh, sort of a lot of time to process these kinds of allegations, the way they played out, whether it's for Clarence Thomas, for a Bill Cosby, we had Kobe Bryant had these allegations. In the end, does it wind up hurting women who make the allegations more than it hurts the men uh, who are accused? Well, I don't think it's a um, yes, no kind of situation. I think that there's a cultural shift that needs to happen, not an individual shift. Not, you know, not where you point out one person and say, oh, we're no longer going to um, yeah. hire you. But that we're creating a, a, re, a, re, a, a new understanding of what the responsibilities are of women and men when they are friends or when they are working together. And that there needs to be mutual respect. Yeah. And that I think a lot of what's happening or was happening was not a was the opposite of mutual respect. And, and for Clarence Thomas, I mean, the outcome of this has, it did damage his reputation uh, in, in quite a, a significant way. If you look now uh, at the, the public policy poll about your least favorite it's a, it's a Supreme Court Justice, Clarence Thomas, right at the top of that list. Um, so it did end up doing lasting damage to his reputation. Well, let's just go back to, when you listen to the women who testified for Clarence Thomas, in terms of respect and, you know, um, an office environment that was of mutual respect, every single woman who testified, there's not a single woman outside of uh, Anita Hill who, who, talk, uh, who, who made those types of allegations against Clarence Thomas under oath. But that doesn't prima facie mean that it's not true. But I mean, I, I understand sure. you were his advocate and I really appreciate you coming here today to talk appreciate to uh, Mark Pellet. Thank you so much. And Lon Guineer, wonderful you. to have you both. All right. Up